early September 2007, Samson Parker decided to take a quick break from work to pick a load of corn at his nearby farm. Everything was going great. I mean, it was just picking the corn. The machine was running perfect, and the big ears of corn was just shooting in the back of the wagon like they're supposed to. Then his corn picker jammed. The other times when it clogged up, I always kept the corn picker cut off. This time, I thought by turning the machine on that the rollers would take the corn stalk through, and it didn't. When I grabbed a hold of the corn stalk and pulled down and couldn't get the corn stalk to come out, then I pushed up. And when I did, in a split second, it pulled my hand up into the rollers. I was so mad. I could not believe what had happened. Samson felt the rollers rip into his glove and then his right hand. It was very painful. I was panicked. I was like, if I don't get free pretty soon, I'm gonna bleed to death right here. He started grasping at anything within reach. I was busy with my left hand digging into the dirt to, to get dirt and rocks. And I knew I had to jam the machine to get my hand free from the rollers. At that point, I turned to God and I screamed out, cried out to God several times for help. I was so scared that I was gonna die there and my family, my wife Leanne and Samson Jr. coming down finding me on the farm because they, they wouldn't, very many people knew I was down at the farm that day. I was gonna do whatever it took uh, to get free from that machine. Samson then spotted the metal pin connecting the trailer hitch to the picker. He kept trying to jam the gears with the pin, but every attempt failed. Finally, it worked and the gears and rollers came to a stop, but his hand was still stuck and the gears kept grinding. They threw sparks into the corn stalks below, and soon he had another problem. Just screaming for help and, and crying out to God. The biggest thing I was thinking about was, I wasn't going to burn to death there. Samson realized he had only one option. He reached around for his pocket knife. Fire will make you do things that you never thought you would ever do. When I screamed out to God to help me, it was like God took my left hand and I brought it out and just jammed it into my forearm. And that was painful. My hand being ripped apart by the rollers, that was painful. My leg being on fire and my arm being on fire and burning and the skin melting like plastic, as you can imagine, that was painful. But when I hit those nerves in my forearm, that was pain. I passed out for a little bit because I remember looking down at my mom and, and my wife arguing to be where, where I was gonna be buried. And somehow I came too, and I continued to cut my arm off. Samson had been trapped for two hours when he freed himself. i would never forget jumping up and screaming, I'm free, I'm free. I mean, as bad as it sounds, but I was so excited. So I jumped in the truck, I knew I had to get help. When I arrived up to the road and I started trying to wave people down to get people to stop, nobody would stop. So what I did is I pulled my truck crossways in the roadway I said a prayer to God that I have done everything I can do. I'm in your hands now. And people still drove around in front of my truck. As I was dying, I was thinking, man, I hope somebody will stop. Finally, someone did. He was an off-duty EMT. My truck door opened up and this guy sticks his head in and he says, hey man, are you okay? And I raised up what was left of my right arm and I said, I think I need a little help. As he worked to stabilize Samson and stop the bleeding, a woman arrived on the scene who happened to be a nurse. So God had sent the right people at the right time, right there in the middle of, of, of nowhere. He answered my prayer. The pair arranged for a life flight to take him to the hospital. Not long after, Samson's wife Leanne got a phone call from her mother. She had no details, only that Samson had been in a bad accident. No one's ever prepared for a call like that. I did pull over and stop the car, and I, you know, just cried out to God that I wasn't ready, um, you know, to lose my husband yet. Samson was flown to the Atlanta Burn Center. It was a four-hour drive, and Leanne and their son Samson Jr. prayed the entire way. I guess the worst part was not knowing, not knowing what had happened to him, what the severity of the accident was, um, or whether he was by himself, or just not having any knowledge at all as to what happened. At the hospital, they learned about the accident and how badly Samson had been hurt. Still, Leanne says she felt a sense of peace. 
lot of answered prayers. I've never felt anything like that in my life. There's a sense of calmness. There's a sense of um, being able to, to deal with what you're going through. And it was like, almost like arms were around me, just loving me and holding on to me and taking care of me. Over the next several weeks, Samson underwent six surgeries and a number of excruciating burn treatments. He had time for a lot of thinking. Before the accident, I was a guy who was all about my family and, and, and myself. And I wasn't baptized as a, as a young kid or had never taken Jesus into my heart. But I knew as soon as I was able to get out, the first thing I was going to do was take Jesus into to my heart. When he got out of the hospital, he did just that. For Leanne, it was another answer to her prayers. How excited I was that he was accepting um, Jesus Christ into his life that day and joining the church and joining us. I have spent years and years and years praying um, for him to be by my side. The Parkers have adjusted well to Samson having only one hand, and they take nothing for granted. <laughs> Good job, babe. Samson is a gift from God. Um, he is the love of my life, and um, I wouldn't know what to do without him. And I am thankful every day for him and the time we have together. Samson has told his story many times, but what he most wants people to know goes beyond his survival. If you cry out to God, he is there for you. Uh, also, the, the prayers, uh, prayers work, because I'm living proof that prayers work, I'm right here, um, and that there is a God.